Well, we finally arrived. We're in Bournemouth. It's uh, the Bournemouth Air Show today. Look, it made a lot of hard. There you go. Look, look. That's one too. There he is above us. Look. Oh, what colour was it? It went red, it was red! Oh. Here you come. Both like the red arrows. Yeah. Thomas? Not so fast. No, you're looking forward to the rest of it. Why not? There's still more. There's more, yeah, more arrows. Why don't you like them, Thomas? They're <laughs> How wet? Not very. That's the end of my dress. Okay, remember we haven't got any spare clothes. What I've realised with all this filming I'm doing, of course this camera's set up to record us. Uh, so I would imagine all the aeroplanes are like tiny dots. But uh, hopefully you get an idea for what's going on here. It's, um, it is good fun. And Thomas has also announced that he doesn't like aeroplanes, which um, isn't the best at an air show. But uh, reinforcements should be here soon. Nanny is on her way. Look, Nanny's waving. Give her a wave. No, I put the red arrows on the stone. Do you want to go and just... No, it's not. No, you have to go and hide it somewhere for somebody else to find. What you do is you hide them and when someone finds them they put a picture on Facebook and say where they found it. This is what the Auntie Hannah did. I would more like it keeping it. You want to keep it? I've got one you can keep. I've got one of Troy at home that I did of Troy. Do you want to keep that one? Alright. I want it to keep it like this. Okay. Well, will you hide one of these then instead? We hide one. It's a bit like geocaching. Yeah. I'll be there. Wait to see if anyone picks it up now. <laughs> about your stone you've got there what do you have to do with that you have to hide it somewhere and then you could have a picture yeah of it put it on face and um, put it on facebook and then they've got to hide there and see who else finds what's it what's it say on there waterside rocks waterside rocks on facebook, facebook. okay come on then come on <laughs> Oh. Are you happy now? Mm. Happy? Oh, <laughs> I can't carry both of you. Mm. Right, yeah. hey, hey, maybe I'll put you down and pick out another. Mm. <laughs> Come on, we're nearly there. We're back at the car, thank goodness. We parked about a mile away because it was the closest we could get, which was fine going, but um, it was a long old walk coming back. But have we had a good day out, you two? Yes. Thomas? I like playing with the girls. Yeah. Oh I like playing with kind the girls of. for one. Well, we've got home, and as you can probably see, this place needs a really good tidy, so I'm going to get on with that. But in a minute, uh, there was a bit I was reading today about ChargePoint Services and how they've joined up with uh, one of the companies that owns 
pretty much most of the petrol stations in the UK. Uh, and I want to go through that with you in a minute. last. So, uh, is it the Motor Fuel Group, Motor Group Fuel? They've um, announced that they're going to partner up with uh, ChargePoint Services. So these are the people that you see Genie Point quite often written on the, the rapid. They've said uh, about 400, just over 400 service stations and they include the likes of uh, Jet, Merco, Shell, BP, Texaco, so your kind of your mainstream petrol stations here in the UK. They're going to start uh, rolling out these 400 plus rapid chargers into their petrol stations. But what I wanted to really talk about today was how I see this actually being a really positive thing for petrol stations and how actually I think this is going to be more profitable for them than selling petrol at the moment. So at the moment, there's still quite a lot of people that um, commit crime around petrol forecourts. So I'm talking about sort of these, these drive-off crimes where they'll go and fill the car with petrol and then they'll drive off not pay. Now, there's a really, really easy fix for that. And that easy fix is make sure people pay up front for their fuel. So the technology's there, we already use it, pay up pump, no problem at all. But the petrol stations, they're happy to absorb some of that cost. So, why, why do they allow it to happen and why do they absorb that cost? Well, the reason they do it is because the markup on fuel as it stands at the moment to the individual petrol stations is so minimal that if they had to rely on that alone, they probably wouldn't survive. So they rely on footfall people going into their shops. So while we're in the shops, we're paying for our petrol, you'll pick up a chocolate bar or you'll buy your newspaper or increasingly you'll do some shopping in there. So you now, put that into an EV and uh, charge points, having rows of charge points full of EVs. Now even in the future when rapid chargers really are rapid, they're still gonna take you know, a good few minutes to charge up, beyond the point where you probably wanna sit in your car, you wanna get out and have a leg stretch. There's more chance of us then, if they evolve and if they make their shops inviting, there's more chance of us then wanting to go in there and maybe buy a coffee, maybe buy a pastry. You know, it's limitless what they can do. It's up to their marketing. So by sort of slowing down that refill process, uh, certainly at the moment, it's you know, half an hour, gets you a, a reasonable amount of charge. So at the moment, we're a captive audience. So you start putting those charge points in, we want something to do. Yeah. We can sit in the car and listen to the radio, but I'd rather get up and have a walk around, go and have a nose in the shop, make it inviting, I'll go in there, there's a good chance I'll spend my money. So I see that as a real positive and a way of them making money. Also, the electricity itself. Now, Genie Point, who uh, it would appear are installing these rapid chargers, there's only one in this area that I know of, and I've used it once. And if you look back to the video I did, it's a very early video, when I nearly ran out of electric and I ended up at a Genie Point charge, uh, rapid charger. That was one of, if not the most expensive charge I've ever put in my car. If they keep those prices high, uh, then I presume uh, in time, the petrol stations will realize this and they'll start supplying the electric themselves. Now I know at the moment it's all very new and they're sort of trying to go into partnership with people and I'm, I'm sure they'll make money out of it. But the real money will be the petrol stations that supply their own rapid chargers and their own electric. Because if you can charge that sort of money per kilowatt hour, there's a massive markup in comparison to what you're making on your fuel. So that's my opinion on things. Uh, we've had another really good day today. It's been a really long day. Uh, definitely been in the sun a bit too much. And um, kids are nearly settled in bed now. So uh, I'm going to go in and enjoy this well-earned glass of wine, put my feet up for the evening. Uh, if you've enjoyed today's vlog, please remember to uh, like and share it. And if you're not doing so already, subscribe to the channel. And I haven't mentioned for a while, uh, you can find me on Twitter at EV Opinion and on Instagram, EV Opinion. Um, go and have a look and I'll speak to you soon. Take care.